said it wasn't, but we can check it. Well, we say it is. I know. I know. And so we does we're the filling out the application. Okay. And so does the state of Florida, I believe, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. We'll uh, check the box. Check, uh, Steve, when we send it in, check the regional water supply planning box. And what about water quality Bold. monitoring? Do we fit that category as well? I would think we would. Since we're going to be monitoring the water quality as our RO plan gets implemented. Yes, we will. Water we quality check that monitoring. Box too. <laughs> Conservation. Can we check that box too? <laughs> Actually, I believe it is because we are also concerned about the um, minimum flow levels. Over, minimum um, flows and levels. Well, we already have that checked. No, it's not. Minimum no, we have the minimum, minimum, flows minimum flows and levels establishment and monitoring. Okay. Right. Okay. So, natural systems identification <laughs> and monitoring. <laughs> well, aren't we? Natural yeah. systems. I mean, we're yeah. our well fuel testing. Yeah. I've learned a lot about our open. We use every opportunity that we can to market ourselves. Okay, so we're so. going to modify this. Um, Application, check mark more boxes. Yes. And we're going to add the 15% contingency, so we need a motion. With Excuse me, just yep. one thing. Why do we have Manatee and DeSoto and Sarasota also? Because that's part of the Peace River Regional Water Authority, right. and they're going to benefit from our RO. Mm. Okay. That's Thank one you. of the ideas is to provide water to the region. Got it. Thank you. Regional. With those modifications, I would move approval of consent agenda item F1. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve F1 as amended. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried unanimously. Is everybody okay? Or are you going to take a little break? You want to take a break? Yeah, we'll take a five minute break. And we were moving we're moving into regular agenda items. The first would be citizens comments on regular agenda items only budget unfinished business new business uh, recommendations from city officers. If you have any comments on those items, please come to the podium state your name. You have three minutes. Citizens comments on regular agenda items only. Come to the podium state your name. Good morning. I'm Ron Norcell with the Ponte Gorda Historic Mural Society. There is a proposal um, to fund the restoration of the wall um, or the steps at um, City Hall that displays the first City Hall mural. That mural has deteriorated uh, for a number of years because of water permeating the wall due, due to construction issues. And um, we asked and hope that uh, the city would restore the mural. Um, I think there is a compromise, and the compromise is that the city fund the correction to the wall that would allow the mural to last into perpetuity. Um, and uh, hopefully the uh, council or individual members would consider either formally or informally supporting fundraising activities to do the actual restoration of the murals. I would also add that um, regardless of the mural, the wall would have to be repaired at some point because it is continuing to deteriorate. Um, the Public Works Department has a proposal that uh, they believe guarantees that uh, the wall would um, remain intact, and um, we ask your approval. Thank you. Thank you. Any other citizens' comments on regular agenda items? Okay, seeing none, we move into the budget portion with the first item being Chinep budget approval. Good morning, Sharon Nippenberg, controller for the city. We're presenting to you this morning the Charlotte Harbor National Estuary Program Inclusion in the City of Punta Gorda budget. Um, we've worked with uh, Dr. Beavers to put together their adopted financial plan that has been taken through all of their advisory boards and their policy makers and it is available for you to review. I believe it's a rather lengthy, interesting document 
It's on the on their website. But this is it in a nutshell. It's showing the major EPA grants that they will be receiving, um, a Swift Mud grant, uh, department a DEP grant, and then local contributions. And of course, City of Punta Gorda has always been a contributor um, to the SNAP program. The expenditures are rolled up into uh, their staff expenditures as well as their operating. Now their operating really are a, a series of subgrantees that they work with. And if you'll think of SNAP is it's a very regional wide program and it's a grassroots movement to educate everyone. I, I like one of their policy or one of their goals is that within the next five years at least and I'm going to say 70% of the population will recollect that they have attended or observed one of SHNEP's functions and now understand the necessity of protecting our environment. So I, th I think it's a worthwhile goal and I know we're glad to have them included in the city. And this is their budget, if there are any questions. I would just question the, the reserve of $7,000. Is that, I mean, Nancy, you sit on the committee, I mean, is that, it's fairly stable, right? Because it's federally funded and most of these items are fairly stable revenues, so. Yeah, I, I would say that it's really nothing that we have to be concerned about here. It's a matter of what we're doing is just taking this from the, the, the Southwest Florida Regional Planning Council, what would be in their budget and moving it into ours because we are the host organization. So there, uh, that was part of the discussion was that there's no risk on the city's part for doing that. Tom? Could, could we just have an explanation, maybe enlighten everybody as to why City Council is approving JNEP's budget? As the host agency, the, um, we are now considered actually the oversight for SNEP, and so that therefore the state of Florida requires you to include it in your budget included in your audit, included in your financial statements, and therefore as part of the oversight, excuse me, as part of the public hearing process, um, you, you actually do vote on it. Thank you. For and, you and, and we understand that what you're really voting on is that this does reflect what their policy boards have already approved. You are not determining what they're going to do with the money, but that in fact, that the oversight for it reflects what their advisory board and their policy board have already voted on. Is that? Yeah. It, I mean, it's, we have to include their headcount in our headcount numbers. As if you look at the, um, the budget document, the budget book. Yes, the either binder. One. Either one. I mean, that information, uh, when you look at headcount personnel, it's in there. Yes. So it's because we are the host organization that we now have to show it what the Regional Planning Council has been showing for exactly. um, many years. Okay. I'd like to move approval of the Charlotte Harbor National Estuary Program budget. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the Jeanette budget. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried unanimously. Thank you. Um, yeah, if you don't mind, the, their uh, SNEP's website is at the bottom, so it's just www.schnep.org. And I think we intend on putting a link from the city's website over to their website so that people can find it easily. Okay, we're ready to move into the utilities budget pro forma. This agenda item is um, to re introduce to the uh, citizens, and I know council's already aware that we took all of this information to the utility advisory board on August 25th. Prior to that, the original document that you find in, in the budget book uh, did not include um, the anticipation of, of what we would be doing to overcome the shortfall by adding the $22 million financing. I do want to point out to you that the 2015 budget was modified slightly based on three additional capital improvement projects that were modified. And if you have questions about those, Steve Adams 
um, utilities engineer is here this morning. But basically, it was the raw water program. We found that um, we could not leave it out in 2016. It needed to be moved forward to 2015, that it, it is in a, a state of needing to be addressed immediately, and the cost of the project, based on the, the study that had been done so far, did increase. Um, the other thing that uh, the director had recommended and, and the, the city manager and utility advisory board thought prudent was to move the, the update to the water and wastewater master plan into 2015. It was originally slated for 2016. It's a program that we do every five years. Um, the other, the final change was a small adjustment to the cost of the um, phase of the RO projects. We had 2 million, now we have 2.3 million um, that's necessary in 2015. So those things adjusted the need for financing in 2015. Kristen, if we could just move to the next slide. So this slide you're fairly familiar with. The next one, um, this is what was discussed with the Utility Advisory Board. And although we are not looking at the actual rate increases today, that will be discussed over the winter. We do know there is a need for one to deal with the $22 million financing project. So what we put before them were uh, two alternative ways to look at it. This is a smoothed rate increase. It would begin in 2016 and then carry forward for three years, 16, 17, and 18, and it is at a rate of three and a quarter percent. It does anticipate that there would be uh, a swift mud grant of $1.5 million and a state grant of $900,000. So you do see $2.4 million of intergovernmental grants. And the, it was designed to continue keeping the operating reserve levels at their current levels. And that allows us the flexibility of dealing with all the other conditions that may occur later. So that was one. The next scenario, and it, I'm going to show you the one time one just on this one, just so that you're aware that in, as an alternative to do a three year smoothing, we could do a one time, whether that one time would be in 16 or 17, again, is a, is a decision for city council. We showed it in 17, and it would have been a, a one time rate increase of 10%. The discussion now is um, whether we go forward with the project uh, regardless of at what timing we may get a grant from Swift Mud. So we showed the scenario without the Swift Mud grant of the 1.5 million and swapping that for financing. So in 2016, you see the financing going from 2.1 to 3.6. It adds $180,000 of debt service annually and therefore, to keep things status quo with the previous scenario, we show the rate increase as being 3.65% instead of 3.25. So it's a minor adjustment to the rate increase to um, deal with going forward with this project. The, the uh, final scenario would be without the grant and without changing the original smooth rate but using reserves. This would uh, dip your reserves down precariously low to the um, current standard of, of the 8%. Howard? So if I could frame the discussion. We're actually, we as a staff are going to be asking City Council to make a decision today, not on rates, but does City Council want to sign the contract with Tetra Tech to begin the well fill testing and permitting tomorrow. Have them start tomorrow. Um, we will continue to negotiate with the Water Authority and Swift Mud and the county over an agreement for a pipeline and, and the RO plan. We're not going to stop negotiating. But as a staff, we think we're wasting time. We have made a, a commitment as a community that we're going to do the project. So let's get on with it. If the grants come in, great. We're not going to stop negotiating. We're not going to stop asking the state for additional money. 
We're not going to, we're going to hope that maybe an agreement can be reached and we can get 50% cooperative funding. Remains to be seen. But the well field testing and permitting is a, up to a two year process. Let's get started. That's staff's recommendation. Now, so that's the first discussion that we'd like to have council have. The second one is something that we'd like to hear your thoughts on a smoothing rate increase versus a one-time rate increase. Staff's recommendation is smoothing, but we'd like to hear council's thoughts on that. We're not asking for a rate increase today, but we, we'd like your ideas on smoothing versus one-time. And finally, we'd like <clears throat> your thoughts as to whether we should try and keep our reserves around 3 million, 3 million one, 3 million two, versus going down to the 1819 level. Staff is more comfortable with the 3 million because it also helps um, pay for some other capital projects that may come up in our utility uh, program. We can use cash if we have to. Uh, we're more comfortable with the higher reserve, but again, that's more of a policy call. So those are the three uh, discussions. Um, we are going for state revolving fund financing for all the well field testing. No. No. The well field testing is not permissible under not their permissible. rules. Only the project itself. The project is itself permissible. Yes. So we're going to conventional financing for that project. Um, with the state revolving fund loan of 22 million, what is what is the policy? What is their recommendation? What is their like for our reserve level? Do they specify what what are we constrained to with that? Generally, what now we the last project we did with them was smaller, um, and they asked for a full year of debt service in reserves, um, and. As you can see, the debt service on this project is oh, like $1.5 million annually. So that was their request for the overall fund reserve? Oh, they don't reflect on your fund. OK. They don't do that. They will look at what you have, and they will look at what best practices are, and they will, but they don't um, legislate it for you. They just look at it. Okay, so we're not getting the funding for that for the well field testing, only for the project itself. Correct. And is there any contingency built into our project with like the 22 million? Well, there will be now. Well, I mean, apart from the cooperative funding agreement, but in that number. That number is going up. Reflecting that? That number is going to go up based on your decision today. Okay. We're going to add a 15% contingency. On the 22? Yep. Yes, so basically that would go to 26. Yep. 26. So that'll adjust the debt service annually by. Okay, so review with the council, because I believe I was the only one here back when this, um, we decided to put the project on hold, but there was, there was a smoothing rate increase that was scheduled that we, that we did Back then, this was like Modify. four years ago. Yes. We anticipated rate increases of around 16%, I'm not mistaken. It was, it was high. It was high. It was high. And there was smoothing versus one time. It was higher four years ago. Of course, we, again, based on our planning number, right. got to base it on something. The, the situation has improved since then for the financing part of it. Um, because, as you'll notice up here, your current debt is dropping off in 16. So it's very nice timing for picking up new debt. Actually, one year later would have been better timing. But um, it, it, it helps considerably. Sharon's the only one that gets excited about picking up new debt. <laughs> well, Nobody else. <laughs> well, they're Maybe I should have phrased they're that differently. People. <laughs> so, so the situation for the rate increase is we're dropping off old debt, adding new debt. So you don't, you're not having to consider a rate increase to cover both. It, it's just an extenuation. 
What is the 26 million number going to do to these percentages? Hmm. If it's. I mean, when we add the contingency, it, it could it'll, affect it'll, it'll, it by maybe one percent. I'm, I'm just guessing for, for all of the of three? the one time. So if okay. the one time looks at ten, what was it? Where were we at? Eleven point two. Eleven point two. Then it would be up to <coughs> approximately twelve point two, twelve point five. Just guessing. Okay, so let's continue with questions before we make the decisions, Carolyn. I didn't want to make it, uh, any questions. Oh, okay. I would like to make a motion. Well, we have three things to consider, which... Well, I'd like to make a motion that we move forward with our RO plant. Second. With the, the well field testing. With, with, with the, the well field, field testing. testing. That we move forward with the well field Second. testing. Nancy? I was going to say, did we want to have other discussion before we... Do you want to, any other discussion before we vote on that? No. I, I think that what we need... Yes, I, I would like to uh, discuss it. Um, I think we should move forward, but I think we, sh we need to move forward in, in that um, not to do appear as being defiant with Swift Mud, but that we are we're moving forward because of the uh, um, uh, timing and that they already have it in their budget, so we are moving forward in a, in a positive way, in position in a positive way. I, and I don't think I indicated in my motion anything but positive. No, I, 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 you didn't. I, I'm not saying that you did. I'm just saying that as, as we communicate what we're doing and, and why we're doing it, we do it in a positive manner so that we're not, you know, as much as possible. Uh, it's viewed as we're trying to, to do something in a... Um, I, I don't see how they could view the city as being defiant when we've been totally cooperative this whole entire time well we think we have been cooperative but it uh, on their side i think they see things differently so well because they're being influenced by entities outside of this one so we can only control what we I'm just, control i'm saying that we should we should be savvy about how we were how we communicate what we're doing okay Tom. I, I think that it's essential that we move forward and demonstrate to our legislators that we are in fact building this project and appreciate their help and we'll be going to look forward to getting some more help from them mm -hmm. as we go along. I think that, that I think we need that's to a do good that. message, yes. Mm -hmm. I agree and, and we're ready to go. I mean we have a plan, we made a plan, we made a decision to do it, we're ready to go. I mean waiting is, wh why would we wait? Well. Like you, to call the question. Right. No, okay, I'd like to call the question. Just, I'm just saying it's time to go forward. So we have a motion to move forward with the well field testing. All in second. favor? Okay. Oh, Aye. we had a second. Didn't we already have a second? Yeah, Kim second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried unanimously. Okay, Thank so you. we're moving forward with the well field testing. Now we need to talk about what the pleasure of the board is as far as this rate increase, not the numbers the implementation of it. Do we yes. want to do it over three years? Do we want to do it one time? Nancy. I had the opportunity to speak with a number of citizens about this and, and um, it's been unanimous that a, a smoothing is what the, our uh, customers, the ratepayers would like to see. And I think it's interesting to note too, we've only factored in 1% growth. Mm -hmm. So if there is new growth then you know, over time, yes. it can be modified. Yes. So that's one thing I would favor as far as the smoothing. Agree. Agree. Yes. Yes. Smoothing. I, do we need a moving to move? Do we need a motion. Yes, I think it would be appropriate. I'll move okay. that we adopt a smoothing. Second. second. So we have a motion, a second, to implement a smoothing rate increase over time based on the project when it comes when that decision time comes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously. Okay, and now um, Howard wanted some input on reserve levels because you've seen the scenarios. Um, and we know when we get into the state revolving fund, we'll need at least one year's debt service. One year's debt service, which is going to go up <coughs> based on what this is here. So, um, do we want to keep the reserves? I would Carolyn. like to recommend that we um, 
maintain the reserves at three point or the rate increase rather at three point two five at this point in time and uh, not worry significantly about the reserves. Um, I'm very hopeful and anticipate that we're going to get the additional funding um, from Swift Mud and from the state. And at this point in time, I do not see any reason for us to look at a, a higher rate increase. Um, we should keep it our rate increases as low as possible for our water users. And uh, I think we should just, at this point in time at least, there's no reason to increase it. Okay. So she made a motion to target a 3.25% and monitor the fund moving forward that way. I worry a little bit about uh, decreasing the reserve so much if we were to have a hurricane or some type of thing like that and we need, and you know, what, what would... Reserve going down. Well, the next one. Sorry. That kind of bothers me. We did see that with Hurricane Charlie. We actually lost 10% of our revenue that mm -hmm. year. Right. When, when buildings are destroyed and they're not using water, mm -hmm. we truly do lose revenue. And it took us a while to recover from that. And I think, too, there's, you know, this last year there was le legislation that did not pass that would have affect our utility rates as far as the 25% surcharge that we can charge utility customers out of our <laughs> out of our um, city limits and that's under attack in the statewide in the legislation so um, we need to be vigilant about that it was a big topic of discussion at my meeting in Orlando last week so um, there are could be factors out of our control that would affect our, our fund um, so I would say I would support keeping the reserve. I personally feel more comfortable with that, and I and I, I love the fact that <coughs> you were so conservative with the one percent growth. I mean, I'm I'm very confident that that's going to be higher. I hope so. So um, I don't think we're going to be would go over that anyway. So, Nancy. Uh, yeah, I would um, like to see us keep the reserve at the higher level. Um, I. I I do agree that we will, um, as we pursue additional funding, that it's my um, expectation that we will not have to see as high of rate increases as, as this reflects, but this is um, more of a worst case scenario. We'd like to think of it as worst case. Yes. And so I think that that's a, it's great that we are doing that. It, it gives us uh, and our community, um, all of our rate payers, um, the right view it can only get better from here but I, I think that we need to be operating on the safe side um, Tom I'm supportive of the higher reserve as well we have to keep in mind that we do have an aging infrastructure out there and, mm -hmm. and we have to be cognizant of that and, and prepare for it so, okay. Great. so do you have your direction then yes we're rocking and rolling okay. <laughs> shovels on the ground do we, do we need to make any additional motions, or do you think we have the consensus? Consensus on this one. Okay. All right. Thank you. Consensus. Okay. The, f the final clarification for you on, on where we're going with, with this project is over the winter, as we get more information, um, we will provide you with as many scenarios as you would like on what potential rate increases would be, um, the utility advisory board has agreed that within that 100,000 of funding that they will be doing for the water and wastewater plan, that we will also um, look at a, a separate study to do a rate sufficiency study. And when is the last time that was done? It has been, um, it's been longer than we think. It's, I it's, believe it's uh, four years. How many? At least four. Oh, it's more than that. Um, we haven't done a rate sufficiency study for. See, I'm. It's been a while. Five, been, six, seven years. A long time. A We've been doing our analysis in house. And we would like to take now. Now that we're doing new financing for not only the water plant, but the big portion of the 6.7 million that we're doing combined between 14 and 50 is wastewater. So we would like the. Um, the consultants that we hire to look at our impact fees and look at the, the current new financing that we're doing 
and do, so this is not just a water rate sufficiency study, it's wastewater as well. Because I know quite a few people have asked, well, is this rate increase overall or is it just water? And right now, the percentages I'm giving you are overall. But if we delve into looking at each on their own merit, it will be interesting to see how it plays out. But it's important that we do that because this will be um, 15 to 20 year financing. I think that information would be really Central. useful, yes. Mm -hmm. So that will happen over the course of the winter. It is our goal that when you get to the uh, end of the 2016 preliminary budget process in May or June, that we, we will know what rate you will have had enough hearings, the people will have been able to talk about it, and so that then that can be announced and then the ordinances would be put in place in October. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate Thank you. your time this morning. Thank you. Okay, next we move into <laughs> unfinished business and we have the downtown lighting and holiday decorations. City engineer. <laughs> That's not holiday lighting. <laughs> Since we have Chuck here from uh, Petrotech. Should we ask him where his shovels are? You want to call him back in? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good we'll morning, Mark Gehring, Public Works. We had hoped to bring to you this morning a project for award for holiday lighting in the downtown area, and we weren't successful on, uh, in my opinion, on uh, obtaining a bid that uh, reflected what the council had directed us to uh, go out and do. Uh, we were given $45,000 uh, uh, annual budget and I asked to put up decorations on poles and trees in the uh, downtown area. Um, 56 uh, poles and 36 trees on Olympia and Marion. We put the project out for bid. We clarified the bid because we were getting no bidders, uh, extended the bid period, and still got very little response. We're finding that uh, most of the people that sell these Christmas decorations, uh, they do install them, but they want much bigger projects before they get interested in, and get aggressive in their bidding. Um, we, have, uh, we have all the bid details in the, in the packet if you're interested in going with <laughs> ribbons or banners on our polls uh, at $45,000 a year. But um, I think uh, the other option uh, is much better and that would be to um, go out and purchase decorations ourselves. Um, uh, we have several examples, I believe you have them in your packet of how much uh, actual decorations, the retail price. And we can purchase these types of decorations, stay well within our budget, uh, rope lighting for the, the poles, and do it ourselves. Uh, we're looking at um, about $600 a year for someone to come out and wrap a tree with light string. And uh, the cost uh, for installing one of these decorations and allowing us to use it for one year is the same as us purchasing it forever for ourselves. So that's what we'd like to do. At this point, um, we're finding that it, it, it would be very difficult to find one of the decorations uh, that they can deliver to us now in time for this year's season. Um, it took us so much time to go through the bid process that uh, I think we've passed our deadline to order new decorations and we'll take input from you or answer any questions and uh, hopefully get some direction as where we should go with this. So the rope lighting though is, is going to be designed to stay up year round or where, yes? The rope lighting on poles and trees yes. will be year round. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so the trees, are we wrapping the trunk or what are we doing? Just the trunk. Okay. And you've already targeted the locations for that? Yes, we have lights in the tree wells of those same trees and it'd just be a matter of putting a receptacle on that uh, box and then uh, wrapping the trees. Okay. Um, obviously, yeah, we not a big enough project for them to even look at, but I like the idea of mixing and mat, you know, mixing it up a little mm -hmm. bit and have different. Because right now we have the white, the white star, and where you have LED, and we have traditional, and 
I don't really like that look, but um, I like a variety, like the wreath, something more colorful, I think, mm -hmm. than what than what we have, because we are going to have the white lights all all year. All year. But now the rope lighting on the on the poles will only be just during the holiday season. Is that right? Mm -hmm. no. no, no, year round. Year, year round. Yeah. Right. Is there any possibility, as I know that um, in one conversation I know that I had with Howard, um, once we start to do this, people will say, oh, well, what about this street or that street? Because we are saving money by um, doing this in-house, that we could extend perhaps wrapping some uh, palms on other, some other streets. Well, we, we certainly don't save any money uh, the first year. It would cost us all of the forty-five thousand dollars to do the first year. To buy all the new so stuff. So it po perhaps in the future it, it, mm -hmm. it might. Mm -hmm. Plus staff time. Another uh, question I have is: um, I know that that uh, some of you have been working with the Chamber of Commerce on a project illumination. Mm -hmm. I don't know a lot about it, but um, I don't know if it's gotten much traction. And so I'm wondering if something like this, where we could do a sample someplace to show what it's going to look like, that maybe it might help generate more um, community interest and um, community enthusiasm behind something. Mm -hmm. Marion, is there any chance to like piggyback any of this stuff, or we, would we have to just be a sole purchaser? Is there any? I'm Marion Pace, procurement manager. Um, I tried that with my um, nationwide colleagues, and they said only you would bid out Christmas. Um, <laughs> so I have tried <laughs> to see if, you know, as far as like the services and stuff, you can't really piggyback that. And I've checked to see um, if any other agencies had um, holiday decoration bids that we could piggyback, or if there are any n national cooperative contracts we could piggyback. And unfortunately, the answer is no. Okay. So we're going to be left um, for bidding um, the decorations ourselves. Well, I mean, I would be willing to work with Public Works to come up with a scenario of what, what we might like as far as adding more color to the actual decorations since we're going to have the white lights all year round. <coughs> Tom? What if, I'm not sure I understand what you mean. Are you, are you suggesting that on, on one tree we have a bell and on another tree we have a, um, a wreath or a candy? I, I like a more consistent Consistent? Uh, absolutely. What yeah. about the wreath? What about the colorful wreath? Well, if Helen could vote by proxy, <laughs> <laughs> that would be a first choice. Which one? What about the wreath? The, a, a colorful wreath. Which, which, which wreath? one? Tom, which one was Helen's choice? Uh, she, either one. <laughs> either one of the I wreaths. like four. Or, or it says four, I guess. Or the, the, bottom the Oregon? One here. The one Oregonian. with the candles. The one yes. with the candles? Mm. That's nice. I like the one on the right, the Rocky Mountain Pine. Yeah, I like the more colorful, too, yes. Yeah. Actually, she didn't pick the one with the candles for us. <laughs> <laughs> the elegant wreath isn't bad either. I, I would like something that looks a little bit more elegant and I, no yeah. candy canes or Santa Clauses or, or something like that. I, I'd like a, a lovely wreath. Um, either I like either the first one or the, the one below that with the candles. The other one, I'm not quite sure what that looks like. This so is very it's, colorful. I would. Yeah. I'd have that, to see that so? live. Yeah, I'd have to see that live. Too. Maybe I can um, go out for bid on one with the option, or do options on both. Um, it's just whatever you all prefer. Uh, we'll put it in the bid and just list it as far as you know. These are the options that we're looking at based on the quantities. And or maybe we could get some better, like actual photos instead of just you know off the website kind of thing for the actual ones before we purchase them. Could we get an actual one? I don't know if we <laughs> would be able to get an example okay. or a sample. I could well, ask if that would be feasible to um, present. I mean, I'm just Tell them if we don't like it, we'll, we'll send it back. <laughs> um, I am showing you one option I found this morning. Uh, this is a wreath uh, that is a uh, um, top over mount, so that's another option that would be available. Like that too. Cool. Would that fit on all of our our lamps? Yeah. Would that fit on all of our lamps? We would have to ask for what the um, inner um, diameter would be and give them the size of our uh, globes, 
and to make sure what the mounting is. We'd have to do a little bit more research. Is, is that designed for hurricane standard winds? <laughs> I think hurricane season's over <laughs> Christmas. during Christmas, right? <laughs> I like that option. I love those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are pretty. Those we have public comment. <laughs> I didn't know I was Christmas gonna comment. <laughs> Patty Allen had to think about that. Patty Allen, general manager of Fisherman's Village. With Christmas coming up in, in the orders, are you sure you can't get this in this year? We would only be able to get leftovers. Get, um, majority of the decorations, all the real nice ones, they're all sold out. Um, all you have are basically the season leftovers. Um, there might be onesie twosies left of a couple of the nicer ones, but for maintaining uniformity of the uh, decorations, we wouldn't be able to do it this year. What's, what website did you use for the prior one? Christmas designers, I believe. And I called them and asked them. Uh, and at the quantity of 56, they said our pickings were very slim. Christmas lights, et cetera. That's another big one I use and they have exactly the same. So you may want to check that out it would be wonderful if we could get this accomplished this year um, understand if you can't but it certainly would be wonderful if we could get this done this year thank you thank you Nancy um, if we can't get the actual wreaths can we do some tree wrapping this year when is the tree wrapping going to commence well, we can accomplish that those lights are easy to obtain we can have that done for the holiday season good Okay, so we're looking at some kind of wreath. Looking at a wreath. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Thank you for the suggestion. Okay, next we're moving into new business, and the first item is restoration of the historic mural depicting the first city council. We have uh, met with uh, the mural society. Um, our facilities manager has got a quote <coughs> on how to repair the wall so that uh, it will be, we can have the, the, the mural repainted and that it won't be damaged. Staff's recommendation is that the city, out of council contingency, take the uh, dollars needed to repair the wall, it is a city wall, and then uh, urge the mural society to raise the necessary funds to repaint the mural. So is there any way we could do this in-house or we actually have to hire a contractor to do We don't have the capability in-house. Carolyn? I just have a question. What is the um, value or the option to install the stone cap in lieu of just stucco? I don't understand what that variation is. As, acting, as a city engineer, can I, am I speaking? Yes, <laughs> you are the city engineer. I, I, I believe it's much more uh, water protective. It's, it really keeps the water out as opposed to just a stucco finish. And I, I think that I would recommend that that cap be installed. Be included. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you. I was going to ask, just that was my thinking, but I wanted to validate that. So. Yeah. I, I guess I would like to, for us to see then to go ahead and um, repair it with the um, with the stone cap because it, it does need to be second. I, do you want to set any kind of you know dollar amount not to exceed or something like that? What? If we're going to include this stone cap because this I believe is just an estimate. Yes. We're, we're not we're not talking an awful lot of money here. Well, we're talking about uh, thirty-five, thirty-six hundred dollars as an estimate. Yeah, I would feel yeah. more comfortable saying thirty-five hundred, just so I, we know what we're going to spend. Yeah, I, I don't have a problem with that. I, I would like to discuss the mural itself. You know, it's the, the mural society goes out and raises the funds to to um, do all of these, and it's because our wall deteriorated that the mural is damaged. It's not because of any um, paint didn't work or they didn't put the proper sealant on it or whatever. And I feel that we're, we are the, are who have caused the problem with the mural. Um, and I feel a responsibility in um, at least absorbing at least some of the cost of, of replacing or repairing the mural, um, if not all of it. Kim? Um, 
I'm sure we didn't do it intentionally, but I am happy to uh, do as Ron suggested and help with fundraising and participate in that way. I don't really. I'm okay with that too. I'm. I'm I'm okay with fixing the wall, but I would like to establish 3,500 is the total that we spend on the construction project. I think that would with be sufficient cap. to, yes. Is that with the cap? Sufficient to extend the life of the new mural as yeah. best we can. Probably be 3,600, but. Mm -hmm. If it comes in less than that, can we uh, send, give some money over to the Mural Society at the I think you know they should stay as an independent nonprofit because you know that's how they're set up, and I would like that. That's okay. Howard, rather than debate what happened all the way back then, there is some debate among people who were here at that time that the mural society was warned that, um, but rather than get into that whether they were warned or not, and who said what to whom. Um, we do think as a staff that we should at least fix the wall and keep the process where the mural society raises the necessary funds. The only time we as a council um, dip, um, changed was actually it was a CRA decision to pay for a mural at the marina building. Mm. Do we that need a motion? The only, that's the only time I can think. Uh, have we, yeah. yeah. I make a motion that we approve the $3,600 to replace the wall. Second. second. Fix the wall. We have a motion a second to approve the fixing of the wall. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously. And I think that we as a council um, certainly We'll do what we can to participate. At least I will agree with you, Kim. Mm -hmm. Do whatever I can to participate in uh, helping raise the funds. Mm -hmm. You may want to consider also um, approaching all of the past council members. <laughs> just, um, just one, one in particular. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, so the record is clear. The, the, the motion was to approve $3,600 to fix the wall. You announced uh, just that the motion was to fix the wall. Do you want to specify an amount not to exceed? Uh, I think they, the, the record needs to be clear as to what the ultimate vote was. I think that was not, it, not, not to, to exceed. exceed. the $3,600. Just want to make sure the record was okay. clear. Okay. I, one of the things, I, and I, have, I agree with the motion, but prices are going up. And when we do a not to ex exceed, I'm concerned that we are then really crimping our staff in terms of, you know, what that they can achieve. Mm -hmm. So I. And what happens if it's 37? I mean, I'm just throwing that out there. If we approve 36 and it's 37. Yeah, it just it just seems that we're. Do we put another agenda putting item constraints on? Other <laughs> <laughs> bucks. Uh, yeah. yeah. Then, then it waits for then it waits for another council Fix meeting to come back to is, us. Is, isn't this a quote from? Yes, Wyatt it Miller? is. It is a quote, and we we added almost a thousand dollars to the quote. In with the cap yes oh okay yeah. may, I, may i speak sure finance director dave drury um, if it was an item that if you say not to exceed we would take that money out of the contingency 3600 of contingency let's say they had a change order and they found a problem and it was a couple hundred dollars we would take that out of our normal budget we would only use 3600 of the council contingency and a small change if it was a lot that we would come back to you but there could be some change orders and you have you have a quote but they get digging around in there and they may find some other damage uh, if it's small enough, then we'll just pick it up in the, in the normal operations budget, and we can take care of it that way. But you're you're giving me permission to use council contingency up to 3,600 is what I hear. Okay. Yes. And then, <laughs> and like I say, if it's anything, if it's a lot more, what are you looking at me for? If it's a lot more than that, she's looking at me. If if there's a lot more than that, then we'll come back. Okay. okay. Thank you. That money's coming from council contingency. <laughs> yes. Yes. There's yes, our budget. Really, our budget's gone. That's what it, the <laughs> item How much do we have left in that contingency? Well, I you mean, have this quite is a bit. You have quite a bit left because this is the end of the fiscal year. Oh, okay. Oh, well, then let's, let's party. Yeah, so where should, we, we, should we paint our faces? <laughs> 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 I think it should be the current council repainted out there. <laughs>
a little bit more <laughs> diverse than the first council. <laughs> okay, now we're moving into uh, the City of Punta Gorda Comp Plan Historic Element. Good morning, for the record, Joan LeBeau, Urban Design. Karen, would you put on the PowerPoint? A little background on this comprehensive plan element. Um, over the past three years, the city has worked with citizens and into developing what you see before you. The urban design group has sought out individual groups. We've talked to agencies, organizations that were involved with and had a passion for historic preservation. Many of the individuals have stepped up from the community to fulfill the need to write the history of Punta Gorda. We've um, looked at, we've talked with the Historical Preservation Advisory Board, um, the Punta Gorda Historical Society, Charlotte County Historical Society, and we worked with educational organizations such as FGCU. Uh, we were introduced to an adjunct professor through Bucky McQueen um, at the FGCU, and her name was Lori Coventry Payne, and she is the predominant author of this element. Um, she had agreed to work with us on the project, thinking it would be a year, and it took a lot longer than that. She didn't realize the time involved in meeting with people and going to different groups and settings, and then the feedback that she got. So the element has undergone several changes. It's been vetted through the community. Um, we still are looking for input on it. This is why it's only being brought to you as a draft today. Um, she it does continue to work on the project with us, um, and she does believe that this element will bring good things to the city. So with that, I'll go on. And um, as you know, the comp plan is a required document. It is required by the government. Um, excuse me. It is required by the um, 1985 Man um, Growth Management Act. And we brought the historic element into mm -hmm. it. Um, we heard from people in the community that with all the stuff we do for our historic downtown area, we really need to have an element that gives us guidelines and policies to look at as we move forward in protecting our history and preserving it, connecting it to different um, eight groups in the area, the different communities, the residential, the commercial, the businesses, et cetera. So during the evaluation appraisal report, we opted to um, include it into our, our element, our comprehensive plan. And it does strengthen and clarify all the things that we are currently doing in our historic preservation efforts. How many cities have that in their comp plan? Do you know? Is I it fairly know. common or? It was an optional element, so not everybody did include it. I found more cities had it, but there is a fair amount of communities, um, of counties that also include it. And I think it helps if they're very active in preserving their history. Uh, because you can get additional points if you have policies set up that, you know, encourage this type of protection or utilization of these areas. Uh, so this, the purpose for this was to document our past history, and, uh, our local history, and then provide those policies and directions for um, as we move forward into uh, the future promoting our historic resources for economic reasons, for tourists, for businesses, et cetera. We are, this element does connect several of the existing elements, the future land use element, um, because we have the historical areas already identified in that element. Our recreation and open space element does uh, have mention of historic <coughs> resources, and, and we wanted to connect those through our linear park system. The Punta Gorda Pathways is a great, you know, additive to that, and we now have people coming through areas that they might not normally have come through on their daily walks. And then the housing element has policies that exist that promote the protection of these historic resources. So, again, it just made sense to add the historical element. Um, again, we just want to preserve our past. If we don't write it down, we will lose it. The buildings that we have, if you look at our downtown, we have the Sullivan Street, we have the Historic District. All of those small, um, older buildings make Punta Gorda what it is today. We want to help stimulate the economy as we move forward, and anything we can do to attract tourists and visitors to our area is definitely a plus for all the small businesses and residents, and it definitely improves our quality of life. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. So um, what, what do you, you want feedback as far as 
the, uh, the policies that we're looking at, you know, are they in line with what we're thinking of as we move forward? A lot of them um, we have already done. We're just solidifying them in writing so that we have a basis for what we have done. Um, yeah, I, I think that it's uh, outstanding. I think it's it's much needed. The I know the historic preservation, our board, um, is wanting to have more uh, that they can get involved in and do. And uh, preserving the historic character of our community is so critically important here um, so that we uh, can continue. That's why people come here, that we aren't like other communities. So I think it's not just about preserving the buildings themselves, um, but it's the community in, at large. Um, one of the things I noticed when I was reading through this, you do, you talk about organizations that uh, in our community that uh, are doing something re re related to this, but you don't mention the Punta Gorda History Center that was newly formed, and newly you do formed, allude to yes. it, <laughs> but you don't call it out by name. And I think that you know they've signed a contract with the uh, the county to to um, occupy space on um, Taylor Gray Street, mm -hmm. and I'm on the board, so just you know for full disclosure there. But um, we'll go ahead and I add think a, it would be good to include them because them. they're going to be actively going. To, uh, they're going to be housing Vernon People's Collection, so that's going to be a significant addition to preserving the, the history of our community. I'll put something together and maybe run it by you. Uh, that would be great. Okay. I'd be glad to work with you on that. All right. Tom? Yep. I'd actually just like to point out a Scrivener's error on page 11-26. Uh, there's a sentence that says, by the 1980s with growth spreading throughout the county, the Charlotte County government relocates its administration, I think it's supposed to be its administration center, out of the traditional home in downtown Punta Gorda. So okay. you may want to check that. I will but check that. While we're on that, uh, Punta Gorda is the county seat. And we at one time did have the administration center in, in the city, and it was pulled out in the 80s. And I, I'm wondering what requirements, if any, are there for the, uh, a city a county seat to have administrative functions. I believe that we, we have the, the, the Justice, Justice Center. Center. I believe that that is a requirement, or is it not a requirement, or it's all up to the discretion of the, uh, the county? Yeah, that wasn't a requirement. Okay. In order to get the Justice Center here, we provided the land. Mm -hmm. Same with the uh, Convention Center. Mm -hmm. I thought the Justice Center was supposed to be in the county seat. That was that's mentioned. That's why I'm asking if there is a requirement or if it's not that I'm a requirement. Or I, I do not know. I mean, I'd be happy to take a look and see what the what being designated as the county seat entitles the city to. Not that I expect them to move from Murdoch, but I was just. <laughs> I mean, there is a big spot. Perhaps, across it, the street perhaps it would invalidate all of the decisions that we don't want them to <laughs> pursue. Carolyn? Well, I just think it's an excellent document, and uh, please uh, extend our appreciation again to uh, Lori Coventry Payne uh, for her efforts on this. I assume you have a, a lot of lot to do with it as well, but uh, I thought it was an excellent document, and pleased that it's now being incorporated into our comprehensive plan. It will, I will do that, and it will come back to you in uh, November as a comp plan amendment to be added to the existing comprehensive plan. Sounds good. And so what does that bind us to as far as like government proceedings or, you know, um, amendments? What, 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 would, what would an example be something that might come toward the city council that would necessitate us to go amend that part of the comp plan? Um, under the statute, any development permit, which includes just about any decision regarding development it needs to be consistent with the comprehensive plan. Question, um, downtown areas considered uh, is in the historic district? There are several. We have a designate. There's a National Register Historic yeah. District, and then there are two overlay districts. If, um, if, the, if <coughs> this um, comprehensive plan amendment or chapter had been in effect, would the city have had to refer the lighting of, uh, the, of the trees and poles to the historic board for approval for consistency with the comprehensive plan? I don't think so. <laughs> there, our policies, I don't believe any of our policies um, are geared toward that. So I, um, I, yeah. 
I would have to look at that because I am not sure. Well, it's just, you know, we do have a historic district, but we also are, need to be mindful of things that we do within the historic district that when we adopt this chapter that need to be it's compatible. And so would that go through the Historic Preservation Board or the Planning Commission? Um, it would uh, probably do require to be gone, go through both because the, the Planning Commission ultimately has to approve um, land use decisions. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I would suspect that the Historic Preservation Board would weigh in on it before it would go to the Planning Commission. We have done both <clears throat> right now. We have gone to them and the Historic Preservation Advisory Board has actually been working with us throughout the last three years. And we did go to Planning Commission as well. Um, and they were in favor of it. So I guess we just all need to be clear on what triggers what would trigger those next steps. Correct. So any new development then would also be impacted by the comprehensive plan. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. 